Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to show you how to add Google Analytics to your React or Next.js project. The first thing you'll want to do to get to uh, Google Analytics and like this dashboard, as we can see here, um, is to actually create a Google account. So um, you'll need a, a Gmail account, I guess, and you can see here I've got two. Um, and here's kind of the end result, I guess. So you can see we've got a, a homepage, there's reports, explore, advertising, and con you can configure these. And there's also admin sort of settings as well. Um, but what's quite cool is if I go to reports, um, and you can see this is one that I set up yesterday and just have one um, analytical event um, triggered. But you can see the number of users, the new users. Um, it will show countries as well as you start to get more data. You can see total revenue if you're um, using that with AdSense or ad revenue, for example. Um, there's a lot of information uh, that you can gather. And yeah, what's quite cool is um, you can set different event types as well. Um, and you can see what page or screen they're on um, if it's a multi-page website. Um, and if I go to real time, you can actually see how many visitors are on your site at the moment. Um, so you can see here we've got the zero. And if I just go to the website which I've got this set up on, which is just my calendar site. Um, so if you didn't know already, uh, self-taught software developer, primarily focused on the front end. And what I've been doing more recently is helping out sort of junior and aspiring developers um, to get their first dev job as I did. Um, only sort of in 2020 and then 2021 was then I actually got my first job. But yeah, so I put together this small site. You can see it's hosted on um, sort of GitHub. Um, and here we've got just a calendar link. So cal.com powers this, which is really nice open source software. Uh, open source software, sorry. And you can see the times that work for me. Um, and you can put your name, address, additional notes, and you can send it off. Um, and we'll both get uh, sort of email confirmation. But anyway, so here's the site itself. And now if I go back to the analytics, and there we go, you can see it's automatically refreshed. And we can see there was one user in the last 30 minutes. Um, they're on desktop, so that was obviously myself. You can see where in the world they are based on, I guess this is IP address. Um, and yeah, you can just start to create more information. So you can see it was my first visit. It was one page view. Uh, there was a scrolled and a session start event as well. So these are all just, I think, default events. So you can create custom events. So for example, if I go back to the website, um, let's say they click on a button, you can put um, a, a page event on this or a, a button click event, similar how you would in JavaScript, right? Um, but instead of just doing something, this will fire off the Google Analytics event and you'll be able to see it on your dashboard. So as I said, that's kind of the, the goal of obviously what you're looking for, hopefully. Um, and I'm going to show you how I added this to my next or React project. And it's really quite simple. So what I'm going to do is go over to this new um, Google account, sort of my old one, and it should open up. Just go to analytics.google.com. And I believe, as I said, you'll need a, a Google account to start this off. Um, but once you've got that set up, you should be able to go to this web page here. And let's just see, that should load in a second. And it's been a bit slow. There we go. So cool. So we get this here. Um, your homepage might look slightly different to me, um, depending on sort of yeah, where you are in the world or time of recording. But if I click start measuring, um, let's create this new event. So we need to create a new account. Um, and I would just give this, let's say your name or company name. Um, what you can do is it effectively track multiple sites under one account. Um, and I currently have two sites that I'm tracking. So I'm just going to call this uh, my name here, Chris Cooper. And you can see accounts can contain more than one tracking ID. And the tracking ID is what you add to the specific sites that you want to track. Um, so you can opt in or opt out of any of these. I'm just going to leave these as defaults for now and click next. And then here is the property setup. So this property represents a business's web and or app data. Um, and the account can contain one or more properties. So for example, if I call this calendar, um, this will be for our calendar app that we've got under the main account. And you can just put in the time zone and currency if you wish as well. Um, I'm going to click show advanced options. Um, and you can see here, 
This is a universal analytics property. Um, I it turned this off to an honest, or it is off actually by default. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, but yeah, do have a read through of, of all of these. And then the last thing is just about the business. So that helps tailor the experience. Um, so you can select which industry you're in, let's say your business size. So I'm just going to put, uh, let's see, computers and electronics. I'll put small. And what do I want to do? I really just want to measure customer engagement with my site or app. Um, and you can see there's a bunch of other things um, over here as well. And then I guess they'll tailor the experience um, for that. But let's click create and just need to agree to the terms and services. Um, it's required by GDPR. So you might not have this if you're in the US or elsewhere. Um, so the account and the property was created, which is great. And then all we really want is we want to start collecting data. So I'm just going to untick all and save. I don't want any emails about this yet. And what you can do is probably take the tour, but if you're just literally just want to get up and running quickly and you've got a next app or react app that you want to start tracking, um, just choose the, the web platform and you can see we've got Android and iOS apps as well. And then you want to put the website URL. So for me, this is my GitHub link. So I've just hosted this on GitHub pages, um, which just means you have a, a public repository. Um, and the, the name of it here is the repo name. So for example, I've got calendar and then that becomes the URL. And then if I just call this calendar app, um, like so, and here we can then opt into enhanced measurement. Um, so I'm just going to do that and just leave it. You can configure this, but let's create what they call a stream. So a data stream. So basically the data, um, is going to be coming from our website here. So let's do that. So we're going to let that load. And then here now we can see that data collection isn't active for the website because we'll need a couple of um, items. Or actually, we only need one. So we just need this measurement ID here. Um, this is the one that I'm going to use. And suddenly it's brought over this. So what you can do is if you've got, you know, Squarespace, Wix or a WordPress website, you can scan the um, so, well, they'll scan the URL if it's live and then I guess give you the sort of the code or it might even just get you let, let you set up through here. But I'm going to click install manually and you'll see here, this is how we install the Google tag. So we've got a script with Google Tag Manager and then there's the ID for our, um, our new data stream. And then there's also another script which is just pushing, you can see here, to the data layer, which is part of the window object and the configuration um, ID again is our, our tag. So I'm just gonna copy that like so, and that's copied to our clipboard. I can close that down here. Um, and as I said, all we need at the moment is measurement ID. So if I go over um, oops, to our calendar app, and this is actually already set up. Um, so just as an example, let me pull this out a little bit. Um, you'll be able to see here, I've got a very simple Next.js app, um, just using some Tailwind as well. And that was what you saw at the start of the video. But you can see here, we've got the script with the Google Tag Manager. Um, and then here is the data layer that's pushing to. And all I've done is just change out the hard-coded ID just to a um, environment variable, just because I thought it was a bit nicer. Um, and we're obviously reusing the value there. So yeah, to do that is a, a simple template literal string process.env because I've got a .env file here. Um, and then I've called it next public Google Analytics. And I believe you need the next public um, for next um, or if you're hosting on perhaps on Vercel um, to expose that environment variable. Um, but yeah, I think it's just convention as well at that point. Um, and then that's, that's all you would need. So you can then post that or sort of put a shit up to GitHub to the repo. And once that's live on your site, um, you'll start to see data coming through. So it will then start going off. And if I go back now and go to home here on this new account, um, we should be able to see um, there's obviously no data yet and that that's fine. What I'm going to do is just change out the default values um, oops, from the live ones. Uh, there we are like so. So let me just copy these out. Oops. 
And sorry, I should have mentioned as well, actually, that um, this is all within the head document. Um, or sorry, the head of the page, because it's obviously script tags. Um, and for this, I'm using next head um, just in, a, in an index file. So wherever you'd have your title or other metadata or let's say links, um, this is where you should put the two scripts. Um, and actually, I'm going to leave this for now because it's already set up. Um, but as I said, if I go over to my other platform, um, we'll be able to see the data um, coming through as we did earlier. And just to confirm how it's working, if I inspect this page where I've already got it set up, what we should be able to see are the, the Google Tag Managers and the, and the script tags here. And sorry, the laptop's been a bit slow whilst I'm recording um, and have some other stuff going on in the background, but if I just control F, just to search, um, let's do Google. There we go, we can see we've got Google Tag Manager, the first script, and then this one, is the window .data layer, and we're pushing to that. And now actually, if I go to the console um, and just type in data, data layer and hit enter, we can see here's all of our um, information that we've pushed. And the GTM is Google Tag Manager, basically. So you can see there's some events here already. Um, and yeah, that's basically what it's doing. And it, it's collecting it from there, as I understand things. But that's basically as, um, I guess a simple implementation. If I go back to Analytics Home, we can see here now that if I go back to the real time, there'll be one person on the site because I was just on it. Um, so yeah, it's quite cool. It's quite good to um, have a look if you've got live websites hosted on, as I said, GitHub Pages or Vercel or Netify or you know anywhere like that. Um, it's cool to sort of track your audience and see where they are where they are in the world, what pages they're going on. And as I said, you can add custom events as well, which I'm not going to go into in, in this video, but you can certainly play around with it, um, add those custom events, and all that will be would be an additional event name um, so that then Google can pick that up and take that name um, along with the event and then, yeah, obviously sort of uh, display it on the dashboard. So, yeah, that's kind of all for today. You can see it's really quite simple to set up and yeah, it makes a big difference when you're trying to track your personal projects or just keep an eye on things. And if you ever wonder how many people might go onto your portfolio, let's say, or another website, um, it's very simple to set up and obviously completely free as well. Um, I'm not sure if there's sort of usage, usage limits or anything like that, but I certainly haven't come across them. Um, but then again, my projects have been quite small, but Anyhow, so I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions at all. I'd love to help. And as I said, I will leave my um, calendar below as well. So if you'd like to chat about front-end development or get any help with your CV, portfolio, or LinkedIn examples, um, I'd love to be able to sort of help you out there and get you your first dev job. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.